Hi guys, today I'm going to show you how I make my uh, my jacketed 4570 bullets. These are .458 with the spring back. I thought they looked pretty darn good. They just got the exposed point and the flat tip and I'm making them out of a 30-06 brass. So the first thing I do, I get my full size 30-06 brass here. I'm using this Greek junk I found at the range. I don't have a use for it and they're just going to send it to the scrap yard. But 45 ACP will work good too and you don't have to go through this but I got 45 ACP coming tomorrow but I don't have any today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to chuck it up in my drill. I'm just going to lop the end off with my pipe cutter here just so it's easier on my new trimmer and um, then we'll get started. Alrighty so I got the end lopped off now it kind of looks more like a 45 ACP. I don't know if 30 odd 6 would be better in some cases just because you got the thicker web on the brass. But, um, yeah, I don't know. We'll figure it out. So I'm going to trim it up now, and then I'll put it on my uh, caliper, and we'll see how long I'm using. Uh, this setting right here, I haven't measured it, but it works great. Alrighty, so I got her trimmed to .870 on my trimmer, and then I chamfered the inside. And that seems to work pretty good. you got to chamfer the inside when you fill them with lead otherwise, because otherwise you're going to get a funny lip on the top, and they're not going to fill evenly. Alrighty, so I got my brass all cut up. It kind of looks like 45 ACP, which I wish I had, but it's coming tomorrow. So I'm only making a few right now. But anyway, you can see this is the Greek 30S6, the surplus junk you'll find in the brass bin. What we're going to do is we're going to heat it up with our torch until it's real nice and hot. I'm going to anneal the holy hell out of it. Alrighty, so I got my torch. I got my piece of brass. Now the one part you really want to get is right there in the back right near the um, the case head because you got to remember that part's going to be real hard especially on 30-06 it's never been annealed back there and it's been formed quite a bit you never know how many times people reload it too so make sure you get her nice and hot doesn't matter you can't really over anneal in this case so get her nice and hot I like to look for a little bit of a red glow and then I heat up the back separately now I've been told you can do this on a charcoal I mean a, a propane grill that sounds like a wonderful idea. I'm going to try that out tomorrow with my ACP brass, but I only got to do a few more today, and I'll have 50 for the range tomorrow before I get that brass. Alrighty, when your brass is finished annealing, you'll notice it's got kind of a purple color to it all the way around. Definitely want to get right there on the back, on the case head, right next to where the head stamp and the primer is, because that's going to be your hardest area, and you definitely don't want to wear out your barrel. Now, soft brass is actually softer than copper, at least according to quick load, the start pressure is lower. So you're going to be fine as long as you anneal it. But if you don't anneal it, good luck getting it through your press too. So now we're done with this. Now we're going to step up to sizing it down to 0.458 with our push through sizer. Alrighty, so here's the next thing we do. I like this spray on cooking spray for lube. It works great and it doesn't cost anything. Well, like two bucks and it works a million times better than one shot. So, and all of you say, oh, why don't you cast your own bullets? I do too, but I want to fling these out real quick. So you get your lubed up brass that you annealed. I just let it cool down a little bit, but it doesn't matter if it's hot or cold. I'm just impatient. So you get your annealed brass that's cut down, all ready to go. This is a Lee push-through sizer. It's got an attachment for your ram. It's got a catcher on top and just a die right there. So you put your piece of brass on the ram. You line her up, and it's not this hard, it's just this hard with one hand. So you line your brass up in there, and up it goes. And you just keep doing that until you got them all sized. This will bring them right down to .458. You can bore it out a little bit with some sandpaper for .459 if you really want, but it's going to spring back a little bit anyway. Alrighty, so I got my brass all sized up for now. All at that point four five eight, mm. and I might resize it again after I run it through and form the uh, the ogive. So now I got my lead pot heating up over here, and I'm just putting in straight lead. That's it. And I, you know, as soon as it melts, I start pouring, and then I'll show you my mold I use to fill these. Alrighty. So if you have a tumbler too, after you size these guys up, get your brass all good to go. You might want to tumble that lube off. I mean, you can. I don't have a tumbler, and it seems to work just fine. I wish I did, but I don't have any money right now. But anyway, 
So what I did is I took an old Lee aluminum mold that wasn't casting a very good bullet. I got my drill bit, drilled it out. Now it makes a fantastic core. All I do, open the mold. Pop two pieces of my formed brass in. Close the sprue plate. Now I just fill them up, pop the sprue plate off, and both the cores are the same. They sit right in the brass. So it's not exactly swaged, but you can see I'm using the Elite, the uh, Challenger, the aluminum press. So I don't think I'm going to be doing much real true swaging because it's just going to break on me. Alrighty, so I just fill up my mold here and uh, let's try and get that off with one hand. I don't think it'll happen. Knock your sprue off, drop your two formed pieces, and fill the rest up. All right, and you all can probably hear me a little better without that gas mask on. So, now i got all my pieces of brass all filled up nice with the same amount of lead because they just popped out of that mold. It's great. It feels like it's just a really nice, easy casting mold. Still a little hot. I'm going to wait for them to cool down a little bit. Get them with a little bit of lube, and then I'll show you how I run them through that sizing dive to form my ogive. Or ogive, however the hell you want to pronounce it. Alrighty, here's my cores and my my brass here, which is going to be my jacket. Just going to give it a little blast with some lube so I don't get it stuck in my die. So I've got a RC, I like the RCBS dies, they're awesome. I wish I had the RCBS press, but hey, maybe eventually. But this is the 762 by 54 r full length sizing die. Why I use it instead of a more common caliber is it's got the perfect diameter where it comes up into the neck, where it's not going to short you and make your brass, or your bullet in this case, too narrow. So what we're going to do is we've still got the Lee Push Through Sizer Ram on, and we've got the sizing die. Now I've got it adjusted to where I like it. I'm sure everybody will find their own settings. So I just take this guy here, put him on. Ooh, it's tough to do with one hand. Bring him on up. Up he goes. Handle goes down. Not bad. Didn't flex at all. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my punch and punch it out. Alrighty, so I got my punch on there. I don't know what you guys want to use. Maybe you could use a Phillips head and make a cool little indent on it. Anyway, I just use a roll pin punch. It got the expander removed, the decapper removed. You might be able to do something like a hollow point with it. I don't know. I think a hollow point on the 4570 is kind of dumb. You're going to have your bullet blow up anyway. Alrighty, so I punched it out. There you go. Not bad looking. It looks just like a factory bullet. Let me see if I can get my camera to focus on it. You got your nice little exposed lead flat point. Punch, just put a little dimple in the middle. Yeah, maybe it'll help it expand. So all I do is I put these in my drill. I hit them with the steel wheel to make them look nice. Makes them almost look like a copper jacket. So I'll hit them with my steel wheel. I'll probably get a tumbler eventually and just tumble them. Then they'll look great. But anyway, I'm going to mic this with my uh, my caliper there and we'll see what we got. So I got my caliper zeroed. I got my new bullet and I'm at 0.4565 which is great. It's going to spring back a little bit anyway. They normally say mm, 0.001. So that's going to be 0.4585, which is great because a lot of the 4570s, you know, they're a little, they're a little bit overboard, just a touch. But it looks beautiful. I went all the way down the bottom. Now, if it isn't the size you want, you just run it right back through your sizer and you'll get her. And I mean, it's a nice looking bullet. I wouldn't be afraid to show these to my friends. And say, hey, look, it works good. So I'm going to take these to the range tomorrow and we'll see what we got, how they shoot. I'm loading them over. The Accurate 2495, which is an awesome powder. It's good for 30 out 62 I'm shooting 54 grains with a really light crimp. Now, don't take my stuff for granted. You know, do this at your own risk. Don't blow yourself up and blame me because you're stupid. Alrighty, I got my 2495. I got my beautiful Starline brass that I shot a million times. Just going to load a couple up to show you, you know, this is actually what I'm loading. Some people said, hey, that looks like regular copper jacketed commercial flat nose yeah it does but i'll show you this is just you know the homemade bullets they look awesome hopefully they shoot as good this is a mild charge for the weight i'm using i'm not going to tell you how much my bullets weigh because yours are going to weigh different and i don't want you to blow yourself up 
Alrighty, powder's in, bullet's in. Just like good old times, you pull the lever. Up it goes. Just gotta crimp it. Looks freaking awesome. Looks like you're shooting the Sierra flat point. Run her through my factory crimp die so my Henry doesn't smush the bullet all the way back in the case for me. And there we go. That's that. It looks amazing. Hope it shoots as good. I hope you guys have good luck with it because jacketed bullets for these rifles are too darn expensive.